Well, it's nice weather here now in Baku, but a bit chilly, huh? Oh dear, yes. The winter has come already. <laughs> uh, you know, Baku is situated in the Apsheron Peninsula, and because of that, the Caspian Sea is softening the weather climate here in Baku city. So normally during the entire winter, we do not have that much uh, freezing temperature. All seasons are very nice in Baku city. Uh, my personal beloved ones are spring and autumn, to be honest. And so October, what will be the weather in exactly. October? Exactly. In the October, we have a very nice weather. It's not that hot, summer hot. And also, it's you know not getting very much cold. It's a very moderate. Uh, we, in the sewage, you can have a, a walking in the city without any sweating. And also, you know, during the uh, early morning time and uh, night time, it can be a bit chilly. But you never know. Baku is also called the city of winds. City I very of much hope. Uh, yeah. yeah, I very much hope that. Uh, it will not be that much windy, so if there is a moderate wind, that would be okay. Oh, that's of fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the the traffic was quite heavy mm. in the morning. Uh, uh, what do you expect for for the traffic during the IEC? Well, Christian, you know, uh, this is a nightmare nowadays. The country is growing, the city is growing, so it's a typical. Baku is a capital city, and yeah. uh, there are too much industrialization here also uh, government tries to normalize the situation nowadays uh, we are thinking some special schemes uh, for the week of IEC uh, in terms of dedicated lines or the police oh, that's good. supporting the traffic I hope that that will not be a bit that much uh, heavy traffic during the October next year okay hmm. that's good I personally have met you a couple of times in Baku how many times have you been in Baku city? Oh, I think it's the fifth time I'm coming here to Baku and every time coming here to Baku is a great experience. So I'm very happy to be here again and meet you. Great, thank you. I'm curious, uh, how many years are you working for the Federation and uh, how many times have you participated and managed, organized the IECs? Well, my history with IECs is quite long-standing. I've had the pleasure to be a delegate at three or four IECs mm -hmm. before I became executive director of the IEF. And since 2011, which was my first IEC in uh, Cape Town, um, um, I've organized with my team 12 IECs now, and the upcoming IEC in Baku will be number 13. So I'm really looking forward to it. Great. May I ask which one, which IEC was the favorite for you? Ah, this, this is a difficult question. Every IEC is special and has its own features and, and exciting moments. But for me, um, the, the favorite IEC is always the one I'm organizing at the moment. Mm. So uh, uh, we are now working on the IEC here in Baku. So for me, certainly IEC in Baku is the favorite one. But I need to say that all IECs also, which we've done in the past, they leave a legacy, not only with the host country, but also with us, with the organizers and the host. And it's also always great memories, which you have for all the IECs, actually. Mm, I see, I see. Good. Samadin, every IEC will, is different. So how will IEC in Baku differ from previous IECs? Mm. Well, we consider the experience itself will be different. Of course, from the general perspective or business perspective, it will be pretty much the same. Or as previous IEC like in Paris or Dubai but this Baku IEC we will try uh, for the participants to have the very different experience their time for, for their time to be spent in Baku city uh, it will be complemented with the rich culture uniqueness and authenticity of the Baku city and of course the uh, hospitality of the Azari people. Uh, 
I bet whoever loves eating will have a very nice time here in Baku. I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, and also the uh, Congress centers itself, they are magnificent and very nice. I'm, I'm sure that uh, the participants will have nice time spent during the IEC. But also well, talking about the venue here, I mean, this is most probably the most iconic venue we've ever organized an IEC in. And as I said, I mean, I've done 12 IECs mm. before, but uh, this combination of the Baku Convention Center, which is like a, a spaceship by itself, and this iconic um, Geda Aliyev Center here, which is a, a museum and a piece of art, a piece of uh, art in architecture, that will really inspire our delegates. Oh yes, as a Azari uh, citizen, everyone here uh, very like uh, these both buildings. The Heydar Aliyev Center was architected by the Zaha Hadid Architecture Company oh. some 10 years ago. And as I said, uh, this building is also acts like a museum. Each and every time we love our time uh, spent here. And also Baku Congress Center, as you said, it looks like a spaceship. It's a very carbon natal uh, Congress Center. And there are so many Congresses and concerts are happening there. Yeah, it will be, it will be an exceptional experience for our delegates, I'm sure. Hopefully, hopefully, of course. Samadin, how, how do you think the Azerbaijani people will take up this IEC? Will there be a strong participation here? Oh, yeah, uh, I very much hope so. Christian, you as an expert in this um, field, space econ economy, uh, you better understand where the big countries, developed countries are in terms of the space development and uh, where the emerging countries are how are they lacking uh, in this development? So we here has a saying that in Baku city, East meets with West. So the general idea, not only the Azerbaijani people, but the countries situated in our region to have the chance to participate in the IEC. And the slogan of the Baku IEC is global challenges and opportunities gives give space a chance. From that perspective, we all know that the space itself, the space technologies are playing the crucial role in facing or addressing the global challenges. And since the emerging countries are uh, lacking behind or do not have the a very uh, good access to the space technologies, uh, we are thinking uh, with this Baku IEC, we will be able to gather here the countries from the Central Asia, from Middle East, North Africa, and the Caucasus region, so that they all come participate and get the benefits, get the uh, information, get the knowledge. And uh, of course, we all deem that space should be the, for the benefit of for all, as your motto is. Yeah, I mean, all this fits perfectly, matches perfectly with our motto connecting our space people. So that's great. Thank you. Christian, what was your first thoughts about Baku applying for the candidate for IEC? Oh, that goes back some four or five years when I first uh, heard that Baku is interested to bid for IEC again. And for me, it was a big surprise, of course. Um, we did not have that intensive ties and contacts with Azerbaijan before. Um, but as you know, I mean, this is a very competitive process and you remember very strong competitors competing mm -hmm. with Baku mm -hmm. for this IEC. Uh, but when, when we went through this uh, process uh, of selection, which is a very competitive one, um, Azerbaij uh, Azerbaijan and the Baku team stood out really by uh, exceptional engagement. The people were so enthusiastic and not only the people, the support which we felt from uh, the government, from the leadership of the country, from all organizations, that is really what we want to see. And IEC cannot be an uh, event of one organization. It is an event for a whole country. And of course, uh, this was then uh, very positive that in, in Washington, our General Assembly decided uh, to select Baku to host the IEC here again. Right, right. And uh, well, here we are now. Good. 
Samadin, what means actually hosting an IEC for Baku? What's the significance of this IEC mm. for Azerbaijan? Christian, you know, uh, back, back in uh, 1973, 50 years ago, when the Baku city for the very first time hosted IEC, uh, it made a huge, significant uh, impact overall Azerbaijan. So afterwards, after this IEC, uh, Azerbaijan started to uh, create some ecosystem and a space uh, economy here. Afterwards, we have had uh, Azerbaijani astronauts flying to the orbit, also some uh, equipment and electromagnetic uh, detectors were uh, invented and developed and were used in uh, Soviet space programs. This time, after 50 years, Azerbaijan fairly active and a participant of the global space community. And you already have satellites in space. Huh? Exactly. We have three satellites flown and are positioning ourselves as a reliable partner in the region. But now the time has come for the further development. You know, there, are, there is a new, space, uh, new state program for Azerbaijan for the development of the Azerbaijan up until 2030. Mm -hmm. And the main courses, one of the main courses there is the sustainable development and innovation. You better know that the space is the very uh, fast and uh, reasonable way to improve or to uh, develop the innovation scheme in each and every country. Uh, there is a nice book from uh, professors uh, Ajemolu and Professor Robinson named uh, Why Nations Fail. And the, the ma main idea of that book, in order to have that sustainable development, countries should have the right ecosystem invention process and innovations. And from that perspective, Azerbaijan government really understands the importance of the space in order to foster the innovation in the country. And now uh, Azerbaijan government is developing a new space strategy for the country for the coming years up until 2030. So I very much hope that this new IEC will create such a noise not only in this country, in the region, that we will be able to foster and further develop this space economy in Azerbaijan, in the region, and of course, be a part of the global space community. Now that sounds exciting. It sounds really as uh, th there will be many business opportunities for the global space community coming exactly. here to Azerbaijan exactly. and to Baku. Exactly. Christian, how do you see the future of IEC? Well, the IEC has undergone a tremendous evolution over the last years. I mean, number of participants has grown, number of exhibitors have uh, grown, mm. uh, the program has exploded and it's developing further. Uh, my hopes and expectations for the future is that this growth can be sustained also for the future. And I see the IEC in Baku here, and specifically the host uh, as a Cosmos, as a, an excellent, outstanding role model for future hosts of IEC. And that the legacy of Baku IEC will inspire future hosts to even do better and even continue this great development also in the coming years. Yeah, of course. Right. Thank you.